In the previous video, we were discussing spin orbitals, which are function, wave functions for a single electron. So in this video, we'll move towards what the wave function of a set of electrons would be. And the first step in that journey is to discuss Hartree products. So let's start off by imagining that electrons don't repel one another. So this isn't correct, but for the sake of argument, let's just think about what would happen if that were the case. So if that were the case, then our electronic Hamiltonian, as we saw about two videos ago, we could write that in the following way. We could write it as the sum over all electrons of some one electron uh, energy operator. So where this, where this hi, little h operator for electron i, would be electronized kinetic energy, negative one half del squared i, minus the sum from a equals one to m, so the sum over all nuclei of the charge of that nucleus, a number of protons, divided by the electron's distance from that nucleus. So we find out what the energy operator for an individual electron is from these terms, and all of those added together form our total electronic Hamiltonian if they didn't repel one another. All right, so if this were the case, then for each individual electron, there would be some spin orbital, which is an eigenfunction of that one electron total energy operator. So we could write something in the following form. We could write that our one electron operator acting on our spin orbital is equal to some orbital energy times the same spin orbital. This would be an eigenfunction where we have an or, or an eigenvalue equation where our energy orbital energy is the eigenvalue our spin orbital is the eigenfunction of this particular operator for this electron. So in that case, whenever we can separate our Hamiltonian into a sum like this of functions of one particle at a time, we saw in the quantum chemistry playlist how this leads us to be able to then write our wave function as a product of all of those one electron or the, all those one particle functions. So if this were the case, then our wave function psi of electron 1, 2, all the way up to electron n in its x, y, z, and spin coordinates, x, y, z, omega, would be, x, would be chi 1 times x1, chi 2 times x2, all the way up to chi n times xn, spatial orbital n uh, of electron coordinates n. Or if we wanted to be fancy and formal, we could write that our electronic wave function, as a, which is a function of the set of all uh, x, y, z, and spin functions of each electron, or spin coordinates of each electron, is a product from i equals 1 to n of the ith spin orbital, uh, which is a function of the ith electron's coordinates. So in such a situation, what we would have is a set of independent, uncorrelated electrons. So they're independent because there's no interaction between them, and we can factor the Hamiltonian into this separable sum. And they're uncorrelated because the motions of one don't affect the motions of another. So if we wanted to know things like probability densities, we could take uh, psi star times psi, or in this case, uh, which would be equal to the magnitude of psi quantity squared, uh, being a function of all of those electrons, dx1, dx2, all the way to dxn. That would be factorable into the, so the probability of each of these electrons being at a specific point would be the probability of electron 1 being at point 1 times electron 2 at point 2, etc., all the way up to electron n at point n. So we could factor these probabilities just in the same way we could factor the wave functions into orbitals, and we could factor the Hamiltonian into individual terms. So this is all very well and good and would be what we would call a Hartree product. A product of a bunch of spin orbitals in a system would be a Hartree product. But the problem is, in this situation, we know which electron is in which orbital. So we know electron 1 is in orbital 1. We know electron 2 is in orbital 2, and so on. And this makes our electrons what we would call distinguishable. Since we know which one is in which state, we know which electron is which. 
And unfortunately, the universe has thrown a curveball at us, and that is the fact that electrons are indistinguishable. We don't know which one is which. We don't know which orbital each electron is in. So we have to write this in a way such that we don't know which electron is in which orbital. And they sort of have equal probability as of each being each. So Hartree products by themselves do not satisfy this property, but we're going to make a correction to this in the next video, which will ultimately end up fixing this problem using Slater determinants.